Hello, good morning. Good morning, Allison. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. We were both talking before this about, about the ways in which we don't feel 100% all right, but <laughs> I'm all right. How are you? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting through. This is a bit yeah. of busy, busy, busy. Yes. I am just so glad it's Friday. <laughs> I know, it feels good. It feels good. Um, I will share the what my week has felt focused around is that uh, my car like very temporarily died last weekend and then it started right back up, but it died while I was driving and that's a big no-no. A car is. that doesn't start in the driveway is one thing, but a car that decides to stop running when you're on 6th Avenue going to the grocery store is a whole different thing. And so, um, <laughs> so I... We, we believe we've narrowed it down. It's the alternator. We have a new alternator on this weekend. My brother's lovely friend who is helping me, we will be replacing the alternator. We hope we will be getting it back in there. Um, so it's all been very exciting having that done in my driveway and being involved. I'm involved in a way I've never been involved before. I've held hoses, I've done things. Um, I've gotten my hands dirty. <laughs> In but, college, I had a car. <laughs> Hi, Liz. Do I had this car that we replaced the alternator mm -hmm. a couple of times. Like, mm -hmm. I had a friend who had a friend who did <laughs> car stuff, so he replaced the alternator for me a couple times. But um, it would just stall like that when I was driving. Mm -hmm. And, um, like, it liked to do it in the middle of intersections. And my friends would just jump out and start pushing the car because they knew we couldn't stay in the oh, no. So it was oh just my gosh. Things. We joked about how bad this car was. Yeah. And it was um, but it ate alternator belts. Oh. Um, just, it, it would just, mm -hmm. it went through them. I would buy them and like three them four at a time. And the people at the store would be like, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. How many vehicles like, do you have? <laughs> but it would, it would just, I don't, it would go through them. So I got really, really good at changing alternator belts. So if you've got a 98 Ford Tempo, I can help you change the alternator belt. I know how to do it on that car. That's great. And that is something that we will be doing. And it's very, it's, I don't know that it's ever been done. I mean, it's yeah. probably been changed at some point, the belt probably, but it did need to be changed. And it's just, it's very, very stiff in there. Um, the guy who's helping me has what he calls his bar of persuasion, which is like this crowbar that he's trying to, like he uses the tools and nothing's happening, nothing's happening. And he's like, you know, if I can persuade it. And so it's just, it's very, there's a lot of, it's very tight in there. So we'll see, we'll see how this goes. Um, but hopefully next I see you, next I see everyone on here. I am back to driving my own car and um, I've been driving a minivan this week and I feel like I'm riding an elephant. <laughs> they are very large and it's just in very gentle seeming like there's so much car but it doesn't feel i don't know it they doesn't are, they are a gentler ride than like cars yeah it's something about it's just very i don't know but and i don't and i but i also don't feel necessarily like i would in a giant pickup either it just it feels mm -hmm. i don't know so anyway that's what that's what's going on with me i also got Last week, I got a new kitchen faucet, and I certainly hope, well, it is what it is. I hope my plumber isn't watching. I don't like, it's not his, I don't like the faucet I picked out. And so I feel bad because he was here, he put it in, he did a great job, but I just picked out a bad faucet. I've never bought a faucet before. I don't like the shape of it and where how the water comes down. It's like too close to the wall of the sink. And oh, so yeah. here I am, here I am thinking. New faucet, who dis? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to purchase a new faucet and, and just shamefacedly say, but I'm just going to have to put up with it for a while. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. I don't know enough. So anyway, now I'm waiting, since there's the car and there's the faucet, I'm waiting for the third thing. Like what's right. the third thing going to be? There's always a third thing. Yeah. I, um, you were talking about the bar of persuasion. I like that term. Yes. I need to, I, I have to buy a wrench after work, which <laughs> Oh, more home repairs. Let's yes. Go. And I'm like, bar of persuasion. Maybe that's what I should call it. <laughs> My toilet broke. It still flushes. If you, but you, you know, when you turn the handle, the inside, the tank, the stick, yes. Up, yes. the stick broke. No. <laughs> so you have to reach in and pull the it's chain out. Manually out. flush. Yes. <laughs> manual, manual flush right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I went out and I got the replacement part. No big deal. And, um, 
you just have to unscrew this part and then put it through the hole, put it back on and screw mm -hmm. it on. Yeah. It's on there so tight that I can't unscrew <laughs> it. And like, it's really, oh. like, the handle, like, if you try to like force it, yeah. it's gonna break, right. it's gonna detach from the handle. Yeah. Cause it's just, so I need to like hold, I need to get pliers and hold and then pliers and twist. Yeah. And I've only got one pair of pliers, so. So now you're going to be a two a two flyer household here pretty yes. soon. Well, I'm thinking maybe like a monkey wrench, like a little the, the adjustable wrench. Okay, that yeah. would be useful for other things since I have pliers. right. Since so we already have the pliers. Uh, oh my <laughs> gosh, Liz wants to know what calamity cloud has hit Ohio, and that is an excellent phrase. A calamity cloud. That's uh. Because when it rains, it pours. Yeah. When it rains, it pours, and it is a cloud of calamity. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving us that phrase. The bar of persuasion and the calamity cloud. We are just. I love, I love it. Mary says that she has had her house AC and car AC both break already this year and a leak in her crawl space. Well, Mary, you've had your three. You've had your three. So hopefully you're, good. Hopefully you're good for the year. And Andrea did point out that the raccoons have been eating my tomatoes and that has been, but I don't think that's the third thing. I don't think it was the first thing because I think that's just an ongoing reality. Yeah. Um, I have not, just to update everyone, not sure I've said it here. I've not eaten a single tomato from my yard. I have, I have six tomato plants, six active tomato plants and not a single one of them has produced a tomato that has ripened before an animal has eaten it. Um, yeah. They begin to ripen and I get excited and then I see them strewn across the yard with a big bite taken out of them or they're just gone. I can see the areas where things have just been clipped. Like it's like I pruned it, but I didn't because that's where all the tomatoes were. And so I just, I, I mean, it's August now. I planted all of those. I've not, I've, I buy tomatoes from the farmer's market just as I would if I hadn't put all that work in. So here we are. We should make t-shirts. And then if you wear your Calamity Cloud shirt, people just, they know, they know what's going on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> they know to be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guess what? What? I had a very exciting week because I'm moving into a new office this week. Oh my gosh. Oh. So, very exciting. That's and, cool. Tell us um, about it. I got to pick the color. So I've, if you've, if you've watched before, um, uh, you know that I work underground, no windows, in a basement that someone had the genius idea of painting brown. <laughs> like, seriously. So, um, <laughs> and so I picked blue. It's a very, very pretty shade of blue. Mm -hmm. So it's very, I obviously like blue. Um, yeah. but it's a very happy shade of blue. Oh, um, Becky has referred to it as duck pond blue. Oh, perfect. Yes. <laughs> so all of my ducks will feel at home in the in the blue, calm blue waters of <laughs> That's wonderful. That's perfect. I, I know that brown is a color, but it's not a good color for a floor that is underground and has no window. <laughs> it just makes it more realistic. It makes you really feel it like makes you feel you're like you've around. been buried alive. <laughs> <laughs> please come to our library and please enjoy our resources. Please don't feel like you know it's it's fine if you're just coming in for and browsing when you're down there eight hours a day. I know five days a week. I know fifteen years. Like it, it just right. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I have, and, I, and I have a window, so there's no. I have nothing. I, t I have nothing but sympathy. But even with my window, my walls are white. Like you know, they're yeah. not brown. So yeah, but you could put up posters and decorate. Yeah, I put up ducks yeah. to decorate. So yeah, right. So are you going to move everything? I don't. Probably no one on here has seen Leah's office because why would you have? But some people have actually. Some people get a tour of it. Oh wait, you actually did that video. I did do a video though on um the face the library's uh face YouTube page. There is a video of me giving a tour of my office. That's right. Back when the pin, when we were really, really trying to get our, our feet under us during the pandemic, what can yeah. we do a video for? Well, you know what? Let's tour my office. <laughs> we were, had people like we're showing their bookshelves and yeah. we were talking about the kinds of books that they like and yes, yes, sharing yes. that. Well, so I showed 
the bookshelves in my right. office, which are just right. ducks. <laughs> just the whole lot of ducks. So is everyone going to make the move over or are all the ducks coming? All the ducks are coming. Okay. Um, I have not moved the ducks yet. There are probably close to 700 ducks in my office. I have not, it, this week has been so busy. Um, I've gotten like all the stuff from my drawers moved over, all my files moved over, all like the important stuff, the computer, the phone, the, the manuals for like mm -hmm. all the season procedures, all of that is moved, but the ducks are still <laughs> in the old office. Well, that's a big, that's a big shift and that's going to be a big change for them. Yeah. They're really going to, uh, right? I hope they like the new, I hope the they do office. too. The Duke. <laughs> Did you consult them when you chose your color? I imagine they absolutely would be on board with blue. I I hope so. I hope they like it. I did not ask their opinion. You know what? Well, you know them well enough. So. <laughs> Have you been reading anything good? Um, I finished um, the Ice Pick Surgeon by oh, Sam. Right. Yeah, that was very good. Very interesting. Some stories I hadn't heard before. Some mm -hmm. that I had, but not yeah. quite. Um. No duck left behind. <laughs> exactly. No yes. duck left behind. Andrew. Aww. Um, it was very good. I like I said, he makes like science stuff really accessible and it's really yeah. interesting. And it, you know, it it makes you question um like very obviously most of a lot of the stuff that was done was wrong. Right. Um, but some of it like given the time when it was done mm -hmm. how long was it um mm -hmm. and like although some of it was no question wrong and what do we do now with that information yeah i think that sounds like the most interesting part you know it mm -hmm. would it, it, the information was obtained in you know such a horrific manner in some cases but it is information that we have and yeah. Like we know now how to deal with hypothermia because of experiments the Nazis did on people. Mm. And um, there's no other, there have been no other like experiments. Like in the, the fact that they tried to like warm people slowly, now they're like, no, yeah. you know, get them warm as fast as you can. And mm -hmm. um, so it's just like, but we know now that works yeah. because of the experiments that were done. And yeah. No one's going to recreate these experiments no. because. No. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, some of it, some of it's really interesting, and some of it was um, like, you know, they didn't have cadavers to work on, so there was a lot of grave robbing, mm -hmm. and there was also some murdering <laughs> in order to to sell bodies yeah. to, to doctors, um, and they they um, passed this law in England where you know, um, poppers would, their poor people, their bodies would be donated um, yeah. to the medical schools. Well, yeah. that created a problem because poor people live very differently. There's a, a lot more mm -hmm. stress and, right. um, you know, stress takes a toll on the body. Mm -hmm. And they thought that, um, was it the thymus? The thymus mm -hmm. in, in, in the babies that they studied were, were very small because that happens due to the stress mm -hmm. and and the poor nutrition and yeah what that caused that led to the death of these yeah. poor children. So when they would see a regular sized regular oh size in a healthy baby, they thought it was oversized and they would like bombard them with like radiation or whatnot oh trying my to shoot the thymus because they thought the healthy babies had oversized ones because oh all my the God. ones that they studied were on babies that lived in stress, constant stress and wear. Wow. So oh, no. it's, it's like some of the bad, bad choices they made led to bad results. So it's just yeah. very interesting. It is really interesting. Thank you for sharing that story and for recommending that book. That sounds. And I like, would recommend oh, anything by Sam. Yeah. His books are really interesting. He's one of those people yeah. like when he's got a new book coming out, I put it on hold. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. I unfortunately have not made much reading progress in the last week. I think I've I've been bouncing back and forth between two. It was originally three audiobooks, but one had to be returned, so that <laughs> that one's just lost to the ether. I don't know. I might check it out again. I might not. 
And then, um, so then bouncing back and forth between two audio books and I'm reading an, another book and I just have, I haven't, I haven't completed any of them and I don't have a whole lot to say about any of them. They're all fine, but nothing is, is really capturing me. Um, I am listening. One of the books I was listening to was, um, the wreckage of my presence by Casey Wilson, who's an actress. Um, she was on SNL for like a season, but she was on the show happy endings. And then she's like, you definitely know who you'll recognize her. Yeah. She's been in, you know, she's a character actress in a way. So um, anyway, I've been listening to her audiobook narrated by her. And those I really love listening to celebrity books like that where we've mm -hmm. talked about this, where you just you hear, I just feel like she's hanging out with me and just chatting to me. That was the audiobook recommendation you got, didn't wasn't it when we did the um, test? Was, yes, it was. Yes. It was <laughs> when I took that quiz about what audiobook should I be next. It was the celebrity read memoir. Or whatever, and uh, yeah, so I've been enjoying listening to it. Um, but she had a chapter about the Real Housewives, which I've said on here before. It, that is a I've watched the Real Housewives since it came out. I just I really like it. I uh, don't have any any defense for it, nor do I have any shame. It's fine. Um, I really enjoy it. Like. <laughs> and I like what I like, and I do take it relatively seriously. And so um, she had a chapter about that because she also does. And so <laughs> just throwing that out there for if anybody, her, her book is entertaining. If you've seen Happy Endings, you'll probably like it. But I really appreciated that chapter on that because there's this line where she's like, and who says there's no roles for women over 50? She's, and then she names like these actresses. And she's like, you know, Meryl Streep with, you know, has Meryl Streep ever uttered a line with as much, you know, whatever, 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 as this real housewife, you know, as it, she'll describe like the tears streaming down their face and like the situation that's going on. She talks about like their great emotional depth, but their lack of emotional maturity that makes these scenes, you know, <laughs> she about, like all these, she's joking, you know, of course, yeah. but she talks about all these actresses like of a certain age, you know, that feel like they don't, might not be getting good parts. Well, just, Look here, <laughs> look at the real housewives. Look at the amazing parts they're playing. <laughs> so. It's supposed to be reality, Alice. <laughs> and it is, it is truly. I mean, there's, anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. All right. So anyway, <laughs> what are we gonna talk about today? Um, I wanna know how you find out about new books. Now I will say mm -hmm. I am very lucky because I get the journals first that we that the library purchases like publishers weekly and library journal that has all the reviews for the books that are forthcoming um i get those first and then they sit in my office for about two to three months before yeah. they move on to someone else yes and they have a chance to see what's coming which at that point is already out um yes. so where do you go to find out about what well, i mean I'm a specific case as well. I order them. So I know what's coming out as soon as you've ordered it. Um, and so that's for me personally, how I know about new books. Um, but I also, as you guys know on here, I also use those websites like NetGalley and Edelweiss where you can browse, even if, even if you don't request review copies, you can still see all these books. You just have to make an account and you still see all these books that, um, have just gotten release dates so you can see what's coming out in three months, what's coming out in six months. You can browse and, and read their um, summaries and also read reviews from people who have read advanced copies. You can see catalogs from publishers on there, which is really fun because that Edelweiss is a website that um, some libraries and bookstores, a lot of bookstores and some libraries actually use to order the way as a vendor, the way that we would. Um, and so I use those websites. That's me being, as like kind of part of my librarian job or whatever, but another really great website um, for to discover books, not necessarily books that are brand new, but is Goodreads. Um, yeah. Just you can link from one thing to another thing to another thing. You can see again, lots of reviews. So you can know if people, what people think about it, even if it's not what, even if they're like, this book was terrible, there's not nearly enough romance. You can be like, well, I wasn't looking for a lot of romance. So great. <laughs> you know, um, so I really, honestly really like Goodreads a lot. Liz says Goodreads sent her monthly newsletters and she looks at the new list, the new list in Libby. Yes. I yeah. like the, the, the new list in Libby because a lot of times they're like forthcoming titles because mm -hmm. we, I'm assuming your library does too. You purchase the books before their actual release mm -hmm. date. And like they build up holds list so yeah. that once we get it, 
you can immediately send it out. Yes, that's a good point. The new list um, and Libby or even like new and featured, new and featured in, in Libby or Hoopla, just like seeing what, what they're promoting, maybe something you haven't heard of yet, even if it's already out. <clears throat> she likes the anticipated release, yes. Yes, yes. Um, I There are a couple places I go for, for books as mm -hmm. well. Um, I, I, one of the places that I, I like, I have been a member of like BookBub for years. Um, and you can get like free and discounted ebooks through them. Mm -hmm. they'll, every day they'll send you a list of like, hey, these ones are on sale. Mm -hmm. um, but they also will have like author recommendations. Mm -hmm. So like um, authors will be like, oh, these new books are coming out and they're really good. Um, so it's, and it's like not their books, but like you'll get author re recommendations mm -hmm. from I don't know, authors that you like, we're yeah. recommending other books. So that's I think cool. that's yeah. cool. Um, and um, they'll have advertisements, of course, advertisements right. for upcoming books yeah. on there. So I like that. And they've got a couple of different yeah. newsletters. And that um, was BookBub? BookBub, B-U-B. Mm -hmm. um, I also like um, Fantastic Fiction. I mm -hmm. use Fantastic Fiction in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. um, most often I use it for work because mm -hmm. I need to know what book comes next in series mm -hmm. and they are fabulous at that. Yeah. Um, but like on the front page, they've got like a list of like upcoming releases, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, the upcoming releases list isn't like all encompassing. It's more like the popular stuff, mm -hmm. but if yeah, popular's good that's what you want to yeah. read yeah um, and again they will like link to a store so you can order the book mm -hmm. um and um they have also on their page one of the reasons i like them um like when you go to an author's page mm -hmm. at the bottom of the page they will have um because it'll list all of their books and then it will have recommendation recommendations yeah. for other books by that yeah. from that author um like that author says oh i these books are really good. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it'll even include like why they like them. Um, yeah. yeah. And then below that, they have read alike suggestions mm -hmm. for like if you like this author, maybe you'll like these authors. Yeah. And I found a lot of authors that way. Um, so, yes. Yeah. So that's fantasticfiction.com. I use fantastic fiction for work as well. Um, to help me sometimes with genres. I, I, I check and see what fantastic fiction says and that, you know, gives me guidance or whatever. It doesn't necessarily make my decision, but it does, uh, it helps me know like at least what, what whoever makes that website. Christ, that <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I love that website. A lot of times I find myself on the author's website when I'm trying to figure out a genre being like, well, what does the author define this book as? Are they saying this is my new romance? Or are they saying this is my new foray into contemporary fiction? It just sounds a whole lot like the books that I already write, <laughs> but I'm saying it's different. You know, I, I try to try to figure out what they're, what they're we getting. We have a conversation from time to time. <laughs> we do. It's very annoying, but it's fine. Um, yes. So. Yeah, that's a good website, and that's one that you don't have to sign up for or anything like yeah. that. You don't need it's a library true. card or anything. It's all just on there, and you can same with you do. You can use Goodreads without an account very easily, but mm -hmm. um, if you use Goodreads with an account, you can log the books that you read. Um, mm -hmm. It'll keep track of all kinds of ridiculous statistics, like how many pages you've read, because it has all these all this data in there for each book, so it knows how many pages were in the book. So it'll tell you, you know, this year you've read however many pages. Um, and then you can also, you can follow people on there, read their reviews. Um, if you find somebody who, you know, wrote a really good review for a book, you can see what other reviews they've, uh, or what other reviews they've written. Um, you can follow friends, your real life friends on there. I have friends, um, I have one friend on there. And uh, that's fine. And, um, and you know, so then you can update your progress on what you're reading, but you also don't have to do any of that. You can also just use it to like get book recommendations and they have book clubs and message boards and um, they promote new books pretty easily. Like, you know, it's pretty easy to find that kind of stuff on there too. And again, on Fantastic Fiction, you can also create an account 
and um, make lists of books that you want to read and list of books that you have read and follow mm -hmm. authors. And you can do all nice. of that on fantastic yeah. fiction too. So that's okay. Cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't and, use any of that. <laughs> yeah. And on Goodreads, I just, no book, keep track of what I've read. Right. Right. Um, on Goodreads, they also, there are author pages on Goodreads as well. And so sometimes not on like a really big famous author, but sometimes on a, um, new or emerging author, like, I mean, they read their Goodreads reviews and I have got, had before someone, like the author, like, like my Goodreads review, the author <laughs> book that's happened more than once. And, um, you know, that's kind of cool too. Yeah, that is. <laughs> that must mean either, that must mean they liked what I said about it or some something, I don't know. So it's just kind of a fun place to interact with a really book specific community. Yes. Um, are you, do you follow like book talk or like I don't TikTok? Have TikTok? I don't have TikTok. I do have a, um, book. I do have like a book Instagram. I follow okay. Instagram, but on a separate Instagram account. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I, I am very fond of book talk and seeing okay. recommendations on there and, um, she said, uh, Mary yes. said that yeah. would be very cool, but also seems like nerve wracking. Like it would be very intimidating to have like, to know that the author is reading your review. I so I know, I didn't realize that that was an option until it happened and I was like, oh. <laughs> but but yeah. it's also gotta be very nerve wracking for an author to know that I know. their baby, they're like, they put their heart and soul into it and it's out there being- And just made some young by other people. <laughs> Like me review on Goodreads, like who am I, you know? And they're going to take it seriously because of course they will. Lily says that she has developed a long to read list um, yeah. thanks to Book Talk. I am like addicted to Book Talk. I will get on there and be like, oh, I've ordered that book from the library. Oh, that's on my reading list. Oh, yeah. I heard of that one. I thought I'd write it down. <laughs> like it just, yeah. it is, it's, it's, it's a little, um, I won't say that. I haven't run across the guy who's telling me, get off, get off <laughs> get on your phone and do something else when, when I'm on there. So yeah, it can, I, you just get consumed with it. Yeah. 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 There are very, there are a couple people that I follow because they read like me, they read the stuff that I like and the other people that I follow because um, they're really good at like forthcoming stuff because mm -hmm. they do a lot of reviews themselves. So I know what to pick up for the library. So yes. yeah. I've got two different, cause I buy a whole lot that I would never read. Right, right, you have to. So um, yeah, you gotta be aware of what people who read differently than you are, are looking forward to as well, for sure. And um, another great place to just get book news and everything, I think we both subscribe to Book Riot emails. We've been to Book Riot articles on here before, mm -hmm. bookriot.com. Um, and they have a plethora of email lists just warning you, especially if you ever sign up for one of their giveaways or something, you basically have to sign up for a list to sign up for like the free iPad giveaway, which I haven't won yet, by the way. Um, I want that free book cart, man. I want, I, what I really want is the $250 gift card to spend at like a bookstore. But yeah. Um, I know there's a book cart giveaway. Anyway, anytime you sign up for one of those, you got to sign up for one of their lists. And so right. suddenly you're receiving a lot of book riot emails. So you I just, think I get like 10 emails from them a day. It's bad. It's really bad. But, yeah. but there's a lot of, we've, we, we have, <laughs> we've come up with topics to talk about based on things that are in those emails. So, and they have one specifically for librarians even. Um, they've got all different kinds of them for different genres. Um, and so there's just, they're filled with articles, some linked out, some linked to their articles, just all kinds of news. And the one does have a lot about like forthcoming things. There's a, even a section yeah. that's like what your patrons may have heard about this week. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and it, it, which is helpful because you, A, we're already at work, so we're not watching morning talk shows, but it'll tell you like who was on Good Morning America, who, who was talking or late night shows or any of the new? Yeah, you. I love those lists because yeah, invariably people start calling in that day to put that item on hold. You know, right? And you're like, well, what's all this about? And so you're like, well, he must have been on something. You know, he must have been on a show. Um, um, do you remember the day that uh, <laughs> Megan's uh, yes book got announced? Yeah, we had to do a scramble order that day to get a copy 
to get a record in the catalog because so many people were calling in to put the bench. Was that yes. the name of it? Yes. By, the, by Duchess Megan. Um, yes. Uh, um, yes. On hold because it had gotten announced that morning on a news show. Um, yes. So, which we didn't know. I mean, we're just sitting. We're just sitting. That was one of those ones that wasn't. No one leaked the news. Right. We're just oblivious at work, you know, doing our thing, and suddenly it's like, you know, we need this book. We need to find this book because people are calling in about it. And yeah. also, I saw in an email um, that there's an audiobook version of that that is roughly three minutes long. Um, and I just thought it was kind of funny. I mean, of course there is, and that's fine, but just yeah. it's a picture book, so you're not getting any of the pictures. You're just getting the audio. Maybe there's a PDF with it. I don't know, but I just thought, like, why? Huh. Okay. <laughs> I um actually I love audiobooks like that because when I'm training people on how to use like oh. Drive and Hoopla, those short little picture books, okay. the audio versions of them download so fast, so That's I can true. like demonstrate yeah. how it all works, That's and then we can like go into it, like we can start playing it right yeah. away because sometimes, especially at the library on our Wi-Fi, we've got a bunch of people on the Wi-Fi, oh, yeah. and a slower download for an audiobook. Yeah, so I love the kids' books. That's so so that. You'll have to look for the bench. I don't know what service it's on, if any, but you'll have to look for that as one of your options. Um, I, I use Splat the Cat a lot because just okay. because I can remember, remember it. The and there's not a bunch of books called. I mean, there are a bunch of Splat the Cat books, but they're all Splat the Cat. So <laughs> right, yeah. You're not gonna, yeah. So, kids' audiobooks or picture books are great for. <laughs> That's a really good point. That makes sense. Um, another good place to get, well, I mean, this isn't this isn't super easy, but just another place where I get ideas and information about books that I wouldn't normally read is really just by talking to other people who read and they, and, you know, asking them what they're reading and hearing from them. And then you kind of just like, you hear what they like about the book. Is it something you would like? Is it something different than what you would like? Um, and so I'm in a couple of book clubs, including I haven't attended in a really long time, so I might have been kicked <laughs> out. It's not true. You don't get kicked out. Um, I attend Novel Conversation, which is the library's book club. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been virtual for over a year now. Um, <clears throat> but in that book club, I hear I meet with all kinds of people who are all kinds of readers who like totally different things. So I come in and I in my mind mentally am like this book was so boring. I couldn't even. I, you know, I couldn't make myself care about any of this. And then someone else comes in and is like, you know, I love this book so much and you hear the reasons and it just kind of, it illuminates something to you about what, pe I don't know, just the different things that people like and why. Yeah, yeah, because it's very true that like people's tastes vary. Like I get annoyed by like those, those books with like short two page chapters. Like, like that, I'm just like, just, they don't feel like they're deep enough for me. Like I want to know. I get that they're fast paced and the story yeah. is long, yeah. and it's easy to like put them down. But for me, I'm just like, it's jarring, jumping. Mm -hmm. it, it just yeah, I don't like those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but other people do. So yeah, yeah. And so when you're in, when you talk to people, and that's what I mean. That's a version of book talk. It's just yeah. book talk. You don't know the people personally, which is fine. <laughs> Um, and so you get to hear what other people are reading that kind of lets you know what might be popular. If, if I come to book club one month and someone's like, oh, I just read, you know, this book. And then the next month it's like, oh, well, someone else says, I read that book that so-and-so mentioned. That was really good. And it almost, it just like moves around the circle, you know, like every month someone who reads it till suddenly everybody has read it. Um, and so I don't know, I just, even, you know, there's a lot of online resources, but talking to the people around you, or even I've had people even, you know, just in the waiting room at the doctor or whatever. Oh, what are you reading? You know, having having the book. And it's just yeah. most people, I think we've learned on here, like to talk about what they're reading. And yes. you know, if it's not, if it doesn't feel if it's not weird and it doesn't feel invasive, sometimes even just asking somebody, like I said, doctor's office waiting room type of situation. Oh, is that good? I saw that on the shelf. Are you liking it? You know, and yeah. I also like um following like authors and publishers like mm -hmm. on like Twitter because yeah. people will like tag the author when they review the book. Yeah. <laughs> and so um I actually follow a couple narrators I like as well. Oh that's so smart. Because like someone will be like, oh I just 
you know, listen to this book. You sounded amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, I didn't know they narrated that. I'll have to give that one a try because, yeah. you know, certain people, you like their voice and how they sound. And yeah, you can search by narrator, but I never think to. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, um, I follow, so I follow a lot of publishers on Bookstagram mm -hmm. uh, and lots of a handful of authors. Um, but I just, a lot of times I already know because of my job, I already know what is coming out, you know, mm -hmm. and then because I like to read those advanced copies of things, I just, they, the same types of books kind of get pushed and, and promoted. And so um, you kind of start to see the same, the same stuff when you follow like the publishers, you know? Yes. They've got like their authors. So they're only yeah. going to push their authors, but um Sometimes it's nice knowing, oh, they've got another one coming out that's going to have a big yeah. hold list. Like, yeah. you know, Christian Hanna isn't someone I follow, uh, I read, yeah. but, or follow online. But like mm -hmm. the publisher newsletter that I get in my email, yeah. it's like, oh, better make sure yeah. that one's on order because. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's yeah. good to, to be, I like those for those authors that, I don't personally read or, or follow and know about to get yeah. advance warning for work. <laughs> right. Absolutely. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. And yeah. I, I will apologize here and now to you and all of the other <laughs> library staff for hogging the um, catalogs when they first come out. It's but you're the one, you're the one who needs them. I never even look at the publishers weekly or anything because it's, I've already, again, if I didn't physically handle every single title that came in, I would look at it, but I've literally seen them all. So I don't, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I just, I just pass those along. <laughs> I do think that you've got one of the best jobs though. It's, it's very fun ordering them, but I think it's so much nicer getting to see them and like look through them. I just, try to sit, when they come. I just try to sit quietly <laughs> over there and get my work out on time and, and just uh, make sure no, <laughs> make sure I can keep my job for as long as possible because you're right. You are so right. And I just, just try to keep going at it. Right. I, 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 if I've done my job well, it makes it easier for you to, to do your job well, because it's like, I'm not always like, I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to order this book. Can you scramble to do a really quick order for me, Allison? Yeah. So she'll have to like stop what she's doing and like do a quick order on the fly because I've missed one. Or because someone showed up on the news that morning and dropped that they're doing like this big expose that no one had heard of until that day. And then now we've got to find it. And now our vendor also has to scramble to get the data in their catalog so that we can at least place an order, even though they also didn't know anything about it until that day. Um, yeah, it was, when she announced that, it was, it was everyone scrambled everywhere. Yeah. And um, like the, the record that came over from the, the vendor, I think it was just like the name of the book and the author. I mean, they, there was almost no information, at least yeah. on the, on the right. what I saw, I don't know what the right. actual record right. came over was. Yeah. There was like no information. It was just like there was nothing. Or like when so that that time when there was some political book that was being released and all we had was like title untitled anonymous. Yeah, the title was untitled and the author was anonymous and and good luck finding that in the catalog to place a hold on it. Like when someone's like, oh, I want to have that new that new book. It was I like this forthcoming bombshell. And, so, yeah, yeah. and we were just like, how do I, how do I order that? Yeah. <laughs> right. Anonymous, untitled by anonymous. Bombshell, forthcoming bombshell expose. Yeah, I know. And so anyway, no, you all, always does a very good job about being ahead of things. There's just not really <laughs> so enough you can do about certain circumstances. Yeah. I, I, I think I remember calling you about that, that forthcoming anonymous yes. book. And we're just like, how do we do this? And we just raged about it on the phone for five minutes and then decided we were going to wait until it at least had a title. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Because no one, because the point of the record, this is becoming boring for those watching, I'm sure. But the point of the record in our catalog at that point really is for people to place holds on it. But if we can't make it 
findable by people because we have no information, then that record really isn't doing any good anyway. <laughs> We're just confusing everybody. Um, oh, it's the one that just has, instead of a title, it just has brackets. <laughs> I mean, I don't, you know. So um, title to come. So anyway, yeah. 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 So if you're watching this after, share in the comments where you <laughs> look for new book information. Yeah. So you, if you have like um, bookstagrammers or um, yeah. book talk people that you follow and you yeah. think are great. Yeah, um, make some recommendations for us because we love finding out about new people. Um, there's never enough. <laughs> there's just so many options out there. You don't know. know. So share. I know. I know. Please share with us. And uh, like I said, if you have people who you can talk to, I definitely. I, what we I feel like if we've learned anything from doing this show. It's that people really like to talk about, including us. I don't yes. think either of us knew how much we like to talk about what we read. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't, I, I didn't either. Yeah. Because I go to these book clubs, but the book club isn't just me talking about what I, you know, yeah. I, we're talking about one book. I didn't realize how much I like to talk about what I like to read. So um, hopefully what we can all carry away from this is talking, being willing to talk to more people about. about what we're not being embarrassed that you love oh. trashy romances. Right. <laughs> They're the best. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll see you next week, everyone. Same time, same place. <laughs> Bye. Bye.